Good evening, everyone. We're following this breaking news just into the newsroom. Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best is going to resign. This comes after the city council voted just today to cut more than 100 jobs from the police department. Chris Daniels has been following this from the beginning. He confirmed the news just minutes ago. And Chris, you join us by phone. Uh, for a lot of people, this is going to come as a shock. Is it a shock to you? It is a shock, uh, Joyce. Uh, given the conversation over the last couple of months, uh, there, there were, there, there was a certain belief that uh, she she had been frustrated with the conversation between the mayor and the council. You may remember uh, about four or five weeks ago, uh, a hastily arranged press conference after Best uh, Chief Best had indicated that it was not her decision to give up the East Precinct and, and the, the controversy over the Chaz and the Chop. There was some thought then. Uh, that there could be a decision like this, but but given that she had weathered the storm, uh, had been so vocal in uh, discussions about uh, cuts to the police department, uh, what I'm hearing uh, from from City Hall at this hour is, is the final straw for her personally was the the City Council's decision to to throw in an amendment. Uh, that would drastically reduce her pay and the pay of uh, her senior staff. Uh, without any sort of discussion. Uh, Lisa Herbold, who is the head of public safety uh, on the council, uh, called that an error today and, and, and made an amendment uh, to to eliminate that and, and only give Best uh, a very small percentage pay cut. But, but that was the final straw, uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, late last week with the decision on the pay cut. And then dating back a, a week before that, with the demonstration that, that happened outside uh, her residence, uh, her property in Snohomish County, uh, that became a story in its own, uh, with her neighbors getting upset that this this had become very personal for her without any sort of discussion between the council uh, and, and the chief. And uh, that she, uh, over the weekend, thought about this and uh, decided that she, she was done. And uh, that leads us to an 11 a.m. press conference tomorrow with Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin and Seattle Police Chief uh, Carmen Best uh, explaining the decision and what comes next. You know, Chris, I just talked to her last week. And one of the things she said that I remember so vividly is she said, let's just say, quote, the council is not a fan of Chief Best. And I specifically asked her if she thought that she would be treated differently by the Seattle City Council if she were a white male police chief. And her answer was, what do you think, Joyce? What do you think? Have you ever seen a white police chief in Seattle treated like they have sidelined me? Uh, Joyce, I, I think that, that one of the questions that came up over the weekend uh, it, with, with this pay cut uh, for the police chief was that her predecessor, a, a white woman, uh, would have made substantially more. And in this this discussion about police reform and uh, police use of force, even on the federal level involving the, the, the U.S. federal judge, that, that this was all part of the conversation, that, that why was she being singled out with any sort of uh, discussion, especially with the weight of uh, the subject that we're talking about, and uh, it, apparently this is this is weighed heavily on her shoulders, and uh, she thinks that it is time to step away. Hmm. You know, it's interesting you bring up the former chief Kathleen O'Toole, who uh, was really her mentor and really gave her sort of the stamp of approval to become the next chief. Then we know what happened with that. But she told me that she's been in many conversations in recent weeks with Kathleen O'Toole, that she's still a confidant, someone that she talks to quite a bit, um, but. I have to say she didn't even give a hint that she was even thinking about potentially stepping down. As you know, she joined the police department in uh, 92. She's been with the force for almost 30 years. She's grown up within the Seattle Police Department. It's all she's ever known. She's been in command. She's worked in narcotics. She's worked on the gangs unit. She's worked on the streets. Um, and she's really climbed her way to the top, educating herself in many different ways to become the chief of police, the first black permanent police chief in the history of the Seattle Police Department, which is 151 years. So I think for a lot of people, um, this is going to be a huge disappointment that she would feel it so backed into a corner, potentially, that she felt like she had no other alternative. Any idea well, why else she might be stepping down? Well, I mean, Joyce, 
Joyce, to your point, I mean, if we just put aside the events the last three to five months, I mean, this is a seismic change. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are talking about somebody, uh, as you alluded to, that, that has been in the department for as long as they have. Uh, they, by all indications, uh, Police Chief Best has, has the, the respect of the union and, and the police guild. Uh, the, the, the city is still trying to get out from under the consent decree. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been so much discussion about the, the use of force with blast balls, tear gas, pepper spray. Uh, th this is, this, I, I don't think it's uh, an overstatement. I don't think it's hyperbole to say you're talking about a seismic change mm -hmm. uh, by, by Chief Best stepping down uh, with, with a, a, a big question mark of who becomes the Seattle police chief. Uh, who is there internally? Uh, is, is that something the mayor and the council want to see right now? Do you bring in an external candidate? I mean, Joyce, you know this, that uh, she was not a finalist uh, when, yeah. when, that, when that job opened up. And there was such a community uproar over that. It helped propel her to that position because there were so many people that had worked with her over time in the city of Seattle uh, that, that said she needs to be considered for this. So, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's an overstatement to say we're talking about a seismic change in the police department. Uh, whether that's good or bad is, is open for interpretation. But uh, apparently, the events over the last week, in particular, uh, is what is leading to this change. Well, and I think we can agree. You know, she was um, part of the command that led uh, the department through this consent decree before she became chief. That six years of federally mandated oversight because of excessive use of force and policies that were found to potentially be racially biased. Uh, and I talked to her, too, about what it's like to be an African-American female police chief wearing blue and with this uprising of the Black Lives Matter movement. She's about to become a grandmother for the first time. And the challenges of, of sending her officers out, all of her officers, including her officers of color, uh, standing up against people who are rising up for reasons that she can empathize with as a black woman, as a black mother, and as a black police chief. So it will be interesting to talk with her further about some of the personal reasons that may have driven her to make the decision that she's made. I mean, this is we're talking a lifelong career veteran who's de dedicated her entire career to the service of others in our police department. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Joyce, I think that the question will come up about uh, the, there seems to be some uniformity in, in the idea that, uh, that the Seattle Police Department needs to change mm -hmm. uh, and, and what that change looks like. I think uh, Carmen Best uh, and the Seattle mayor and the council all agree in uh, what that change looks like. But uh, it, the, the, I think the questions are going to come up about what happened late last week with the amendments. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Danny Westneat wrote a wrote a column. Uh, others have have written about the the idea that she was given a pay cut without any sort of conversation, and we're talking a substantial six figure pay cut uh, overnight without any sort of conversation. Uh, and right. you can you can understand in any profession uh, when when your superiors give you a cut like that, forty uh, or, or so percent overnight, uh, how that could frustrate yeah. you. And apparently, that's uh, that was the final straw. Um, Chris, thanks. If you can hang on, maybe we'll talk with you a little bit later as we have a couple of hours of news ahead. We, we need to move on, but want to talk with you more about that. Yeah, not only was she not involved in the conversation about her salary, but she wasn't even really, according to her, at the table of any conversations uh, about the um, defunding or cuts to her police department, for which she has the final say over how that $400 plus million dollars will be spent at the end of the day. We'll talk with you again in a few minutes, Chris, if you are available, which I know you will be. Thank you.